new mag has got a crooked head again. But the old carpet needs a bit of a clean. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's done me well actually, that pneumatic. Pneumatic HD. He's a good old chap, he was. Oh, a young chap. I think he was only a young chap, wasn't he? But uh, yeah, he was alright. So, I got me um, extendable extension one thingy. It's coming quite well. Not like the middle one I had where you kept collapsing. So, it's alright. Personally, I think there's some kind of spider infestation going on because they're everywhere. I literally just went into my house. My house. Not the shed, not nothing. I went into the house because the battery ran out on this camera. I went into the house to get my other battery that was on charge. And as I, it's kind of like I got my desk and then it kind of like goes down onto a little box which is where the charger sits. So I didn't even look, I was just when I just reached over to pick up the battery out of the charger and it put my hand straight into a really thick cobweb and I was like, what's going on? And there's a little, it was quite a big spider, about that big, one of the ones with the big legs, sitting in the corner going, like, just laughing at me. Spider webs are everywhere. It's just, there's an infestation of spiders going on, I'm telling you. We store them in electro-chemical batteries. I thought we had a chance to rebuild the city with the Gillette You'd think I'd believe it. A fantastic tale like that. Bloody handy, this uh, Ryobi pump. For some reason, this particular tyre, this front left one, it always seems to go down. Same for this back one on this van. It always seems to go down. We should have, what we got here? A bit of sunlight in the way, but we'll be alright. Turn that on. <coughs> Trying to do it one hand is difficult. Alright. I had 40 psi in there, and now we've only got 25.5. What we got it set to? I don't want it set to 10, do I? I want to go up. Up, 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 up. I think we'll go all the way to 40. 40 should be adequate. I'll do them all at 40. I don't want them to be here. I'll do 41 because they always lose a little bit of pressure. Right, well, that's pumping up. Now, have a look at this. This is what happened the other day. Well, a few weeks back actually. All of that all went everywhere. Especially, that's just after I cleaned it as well. You know, you know what caused it? This little bugger. Come loose. Started spraying water out everywhere. Even went up there. Tell you what, these spiders, they're everywhere. There's definitely an infestation of spiders going on, man. Now we're all in here, all on there, around the mirror. I have also got a bit of a leak up there somewhere. But the thing is, it doesn't look like it's been leaking now. The other day, I noticed there was a big puddle of oil on the floor, as you can see. But now it's stopped. There's still remnants up there. But it makes me wonder, have I even got any oil left? Now I know we're on a slant, I know I'm on a slanted driveway, it's pointing down to the front, so it ain't going to be 100% accurate. But at least I'll know. Holy moly! That don't look too good, does it? What's going on there then? I think it's alright actually. I thought we were a little bit low on the old oil for a minute then. 
but I think we were all right. I've uh, wiped off the stick and I dipped it again and it, it ain't as bad. It's actually, I always put it halfway. Some people always put them um, right on the full mark, but I don't do that. I put them halfway because that's the best way to do it. And now if you look at it, if we can, if we can get a look at it, it's just below halfway. So I'll top it up a little bit and we'll be alright. 40.5, that's what we want. I don't quite know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to try and clean all this off. It's always strange how the coolant always goes white. Still got a stud missing down there. I haven't got around to putting that back in yet. And I know I, I kept telling you all how bad it is to have it like that, but it involves having to take all the um, compressor off, all this off, to try and get to that manifold and everything. And it's just something that I can't be bothered to do, to tell you the truth. I don't have the time or the... Uh, Inspiration at the moment to be doing that. Inspiration is something that I'm lacking, I'm afraid. Ah, bit of central locking now. The other side, that side has, ever since I bought this car four or five years ago, that side not has ever never unlocked. It locks, but it never unlocks. And then now this side has just started to do the same. So I've been doing a little bit of experimenting. I've obviously taken the door card off. And I've, I hate this, but you can, it's a good thing because you can tell now I've been in here, but I hate it because you have to make a hole. You've got to rip some of this off. I hate doing that, but you know, I've done it, so there we go. And I've come to the um, conclusion that the solenoid is working. Um, you can feel it, it moves and it makes a noise. But I wonder if it's just not, it's obviously not gripping hold of the little thing to lock it. So, but what I've got, I've got, hold on. So the old key here. So now, if it's unlocked at the minute, if we lock it, it will go down, as you saw. But then if you unlock it, it doesn't go down, but you will hear it. See? It, 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 it does move. You feel it and you hear it move. So the solenoid is working. But it's just not, you know, it's just, ah, oh, now I can't get out altogether because I've got the child lock on. Well, I know I was saying that Ryobi are good, and they probably are good, but I can't, you know, this is the second charger that I've had now. I was just merrily charging away my battery, and I had a look and I noticed that the little lights were flickering. I'm thinking to myself, why are these flickering? This is exactly what happened last time. It's roasting hot. It's absolutely roasting hot because it just sits here on the, on the table like this. There's nothing around it, plenty of ventilation. All it is is charging this battery from flat. And I look down and they were just doing that. Hopefully we can focus on it. Here we go. We've got the red and the green one. Both just flashing like that and there's nothing happening. So It's the second charger I've had now. Well, this has happened. They can't say that they get too hot because the first one was just charging this small little battery and this one was charging this battery. So anyone that says this battery is too big to be charged by this is a load of rubbish because they designed to charge it. However, the first charger that blew up was charging this battery, which is a small battery. And it was doing exactly the same thing. So I'm going to have to try and return this one now. So, you know, I hope it ain't a Ryobi thing. I hope it ain't, um, you know, something to say that they're actually crap and they don't last. I hope it's just the fact that I'm just unlucky enough to have two 40 chargers. That's all I can say, man. Maybe one of you geeks out there that just knows a lot about clocks or a lot about history. Back in the day, when they only had wind-up clocks, so they didn't have any electrical um, or battery-powered ones, nothing like that. It was only wind-up ones. How did they set the time and know whether it's fast or slow? Because think about it, if back in the day when everyone was poor and you managed to save up and buy yourself a clock, for one, how would you set the time? You'd probably have to go to a neighbour that has a clock and you'd set your clock by their clock. But how would you know if their clock is fast or slow? You wouldn't know, would you? I can't see how that would work. Unless there was one clock 
in the town that you lived in. But what if you didn't live in a town? What if you lived in the country? You wouldn't know the time. You wouldn't know. You might you might go somewhere, set your clock to a time, but then you wouldn't know if it was fast or slow. It's crazy. So if anyone knows how they did that back in the 1800s or 1900s or whenever before battery powered clocks were invented and they only had wind up ones how did they know if the time was right come on let me know because this is a genuinely interesting thing I could just look it up on the internet and find out for myself but I want you lot to tell me I still haven't got rid of this Kirby if anyone wants it man it's free it's bloody free just take it for God's sake right I'm doing a test I'm doing it an experiment now in my empty freezer because I'm too lazy to do shopping what I've done is I I took it I took this charger apart. I went on Ryobi. Oh, it's really cold now. I went on Ryobi to try and claim the warranty, but they they want a proof of purchase, obviously. Um, so I went. I bought this one from eBay. It's brand new. I bought it from a brand new seller on eBay um, in the box. Nothing. It wasn't second hand. But uh, if you lot remember, I bought one from eBay, brand new. It broke. Luckily, I, I managed to go to that seller because it was only a few weeks down the line, said to that seller, it's broken, so they replaced it and gave me this one. Now this was, I bought this in the beginning of 2016, last year, I think, somewhere around that time. Um, so I went on Ryobi website to try and claim the three year warranty, or two years, because if you haven't registered it, and I haven't, so it's a two year warranty. So I've only had a year. And I filled out all the form, and then it said proof of purchase. So I went on eBay to try and find the listing, you know, in my purchase history to find out where I used it. Because I don't use eBay anymore, where I bought it from. And it ain't there. It's just not there. I've looked all over the list and it's not there. I can't find it anywhere. Even all through 2015 purchases, it's not there. I didn't buy too much off eBay, so it ain't too hard to find. So I've contacted Ryobi's customer support to try and sort this situation out however um i did quickly google a way to try and fix it because i took it apart and there doesn't appear to be anything wrong inside um nothing smells of burning nothing looks burnt nothing's loose nothing seems wrong with it so um i did come across a website and they said that it might have got a bit hot and even if you let it cool down it might not work but you can put it in the freezer now this to me, it seemed a bit odd because it might it might cause condensation on the inside, and obviously you don't want condensation on the inside because it means you get water inside things, inside capacitors and everything else inside there. But since it's broken anyway, I can't see any harm in seeing if it does work. And, they, and it said put it in the freezer for five minutes, and it's been in the freezer now at minus 18 degrees for five minutes. So it probably wouldn't have got down to minus 18, but it would have got pretty cold, and it is pretty cold. It's probably full of condensation. Now, I can't see this working, and I would never have tried it myself, but hey ho, I've plugged it in. Is it going to go bang? Let's have a look. Still got the problem. Still flashing. And if you stick a battery in there... Uh, doesn't charge it so it hasn't fixed the problem so I'm just gonna have to hope that Ryobi um, get back to me and sort it out on warranty man because these are bloody these are quite expensive about 50 quid I don't want to be buying another one I did want a multi charger but they're bloody expensive they're like 90 quid what, what's what's going on anyway Ryobi come on help me out please just all I want is a replacement because it's broken Come on, uh, I know probably loads of you out there that use Ryobi, so let me know in the comments below. Have you had any issues? Is it just me that's had this issue with random charges that keep breaking? I mean, the tools are seem to be alright, not any problem with the tools. It's just these charges, they don't last five minutes. It's not as if I use them every day, there's people that have their tools and use them daily. You know, charge batteries, con non-stop, constantly charging batteries every day. But I don't do that, you know, I maybe charge up twice in a week maybe so and it's always stays in the same spot it's always on this bench or on the shelf in there so i don't know what the problem is there but come on let me know if you've had any issues is ryobi crap am i really just hyping up ryobi for saying that they're good when they're crap 
or is it just me and it's a bit unlucky? Let me know. Yeah.